Hey there friend, my name is Christina Rafano from NursingSOS.com and in this video we are walking through the pathophysiology and the signs and symptoms of Cushing syndrome. We'll also cover the must know critical thinking points that you will need to know about it to pass your nursing school exams. So hit that subscribe button and click the notification bell and let's dive in. So Cushing syndrome is caused by an overproduction of the hormone called cortisol. So there's too much cortisol floating around in the body. Now here's a really cool memory trick for you. CC, Cushing and cortisol. Increased cortisol causes Cushing syndrome. So CC, Cushing, cortisol. Cortisol is released by the adrenal glands and is an important hormone in the body. It's one of the fight or flight hormones. And here's a huge critical thinking point for you. There's four main things that cortisol does, all right? It reduces inflammation and suppresses the immune system. It causes the body to break down protein and fat, it causes the blood glucose levels to rise, and it helps to regulate mood. So remember those four roles of cortisol. Those are really important and you'll see why in a minute. So let's think about this for a second. If you're in a fight or flight situation, like trying to outrun a lion, or even when you're taking a nursing school exam and you're super nervous, cortisol will be released so that your body will break down more protein and fat for energy and your blood glucose levels will rise all to help give you the energy so that you can keep running or keep working. Cortisol also suppresses inflammation and the immune system to keep you functioning optimally during stress. So ever wonder why you sometimes get sick right after a stressful event such as a huge exam? It's because your body was secreting so much cortisol and suppressing the immune system, making the body more susceptible then to pathogens. But because the cortisol reduces inflammation, you don't get the symptoms of being sick, like a cough or a runny nose. Then when the stress is over, bam, your immune system is back and you get sick. Super fascinating, right? So cortisol is really nice to have on board when you're stressed. It helps you stay energized by giving you glucose and breaking down protein and fat, and it helps you to not get sick as much. But here's the problem. A chronic overproduction of cortisol, a lot of stress can cause big issues. As you can imagine, there is way too much protein and fat broken down, uh, chronically high blood glucose levels, and then that chronic immunosuppression. And this is what Cushing syndrome is. There is an overproduction, way overproduction and chronic production of cortisol. So let's put this into simple steps so that you can visualize what's really going on here. You know that I love putting pathophysiology and these more difficult nursing school con uh, concepts into simple steps for you to follow. I really just think that it helps it all come together easier so that you can understand it better. I know that it did that for me, so I hope that's how it is for you. So that's why I do it this way. And this one is pretty simple because there's only really two main steps, okay? The first thing that happens is that there is an increase in cortisol, right? Remember, cortisol is your big key point here for Cushing syndrome. Remember, Cushing syndrome is a problem with an increase in cortisol, Cushing cortisol. This can be because of steroid use, like with medications, or it could be caused from a tumor in the lungs or the pancreas or the GI tract or a tumor in the pituitary gland. This is called Cushing's disease, which is a type of Cushing syndrome. Now, when this happens and cortisol is released over a long period of time, those four things happen. And this is step number two. Inflammation is reduced and the immune system is suppressed. That protein and fat are broken down. The blood glucose level rise, uh, rises and the mood can become depressed. So now that we understand the pathophysiology and the role of cortisol, that pathophysiology of Cushing syndrome, now let's walk through the common signs and symptoms and especially the key ones that the NCLEX loves to test you on. Now, if you've been around here for a while, you know that I like to walk you through the critical thinking behind all of these so that you can actually understand why these signs and 
and symptoms are happening. This is key, my friend. Nursing school is not about memorization. So memorizing a list of signs and symptoms is not going to help you. Instead, we want to make sure that you understand the critical thinking behind it all, which will help you be much, much, much more prepared for your nursing school exams. So for the signs and symptoms of Cushing syndrome, it all comes down to those four main roles of cortisol, okay? Again, cortisol reduces inflammation and suppresses the immune system. It causes the body to break down protein and fat, it causes those blood, that blood glucose level to rise, and it helps to regulate mood. Now, this is a huge critical thinking point because all of the signs and symptoms will stem from mainly those four roles of cortisol. So the nice thing is that once you remember those four main roles of cortisol, it will be easier to remember these signs and symptoms for Cushing's syndrome and what happens when that cortisol is increased. So let's walk through the main signs and symptoms and talk through the key NCLEX points and the key critical thinking points. So there's three main signs of Cushing syndrome that the NCLEX loves. So this is a major NCLEX point right here, okay? A moon face, meaning that the face is more rounded. A buffalo hump, meaning that there is a fat accumulation between the shoulders and excess fat accumulation in the trunk and then weight gain. So those are three things that are major key NCLEX points right there. Now, another big NCLEX point is a high glucose level. Remember, more cortisol causes glucose levels to rise. So there will be a high glucose level with Cushing syndrome. They also may present with hypertension because if you're in fight or flight all of the time, the blood pressure is going to go up. Of course, there's excess fluid in the body leading to hypertension as well. They also have muscle breakdown and weakness or atrophy, thin skin, because they may, they may bruise pretty easily because of all that protein and fat breakdown. Now remember that key critical thinking point, right? Cortisol helps to break down protein and fat. So when there's more cortisol, there's more protein and fat breakdown. They may also have striae or stretch marks because cortisol also breaks down collagen. And then bone breakdown is another common concern because cortisol breaks down bone leading to osteoporosis and possible fractures. And of course, you will see a decrease in their white blood cell count, such as neutrophils and lymphocytes, and they may have an infection without too much inflammation because remember, right, that cortisol reduces the inflammation. Now, another one that you'll need to know for the NCLEX is hirsutism or excessive body hair. This is because there's an increase in those androgen hormones. I know we covered a lot in this video, so if you want the full study guide for Cushing syndrome, be sure to check out the Nursing SOS membership community where you can snag my Cushing syndrome study guide as well as all of my other study guides that I have for you to help you study easier and faster for your nursing school exams and to help you pass, of course. So I will put the link to that in the description below for you to check out all the details. Now, if you want to deep dive into how to learn pathophysiology easier in nursing school, definitely check out this video right here. And if this video helped you, write love in the comments below because that is what we do around here. And as always, my friend, go become the nurse that God created only you to be. And I will see you over there in that next video.